how much practice is enough, how much topical questions are to be done, how many yearly past papers should be practiced. People think that mark scheme is the ultimate. Since the examiner has shown only three steps, why am I wasting my time in showing maybe nine steps? The reason being is that the mark scheme specifically for the teacher so it's not for you the only thing that's stopping a person from getting a desired grade is that amount of practice but before that i certainly believe that your concepts should be crystal clear hello everyone i'm shahab yakub your math instructor at alt academy a level maths is a two-year journey the first year is as level and the second year altogether is the a level maths the whole subject so now when we talk about the first year math there is the compulsory component the pure math component that is p1 pure math one and in the second year we study p3 pure math three now besides that there are three components that we deal with there is s1 statistics one there is s2 statistics two and there is m1 mechanics one now s1 could be taken either in the first year or the second year M1 again in the first year or the second year, but S2 is definitely taken in the second year. So one of the combination that some of you might have taken is that S1 in the first year, S2 in the second year, or S1 in the first year, M1 in the second year, or M1 in the first year, S1 in the second year. So now my objective is to go over an exam paper and explain to you in detail what exactly is required of you by the examiner what exactly will the examiner be looking for? How will you be achieving the marks? What are the traps that you should not fall for? So that's the main aim of this particular video. So now let's talk about P1, Pure Math 1. When we look at the first page of the exam paper, for example, you are looking at an exam paper that is of February, March 2020, and there is only one variant in it. Now it says you must answer on the question paper. I mean, that is very obvious, but the examiner is making sure that whatever things that you'll be writing, that should be on that exam paper. What will you be provided with? You will be provided with the formula booklet that is MF19. Now let's look at the instruction. Answer all questions. That is definitely up to you. You have a time limit. You have to answer all the questions in order to gain the maximum possible marks, which is 75 marks in this case. Use a black or a dark blue pen. Don't use colored pens or highlighters or things like that. You may use an HB pencil. People ask this question, is it necessary to use a pencil for a diagram? Well, it's better. It's definitely better. But if you want to use a pen, you can. But I would prefer that you use a pencil. And then the usual thing, the name and the center number and the candidate number in the boxes at the top of the page. Make sure you write them. Do not use any erasable pen or correction fluid. Do not write on any barcodes. Definitely, you don't have to scribble or doodle on the barcodes. But when we talk about the erasable pen or the correction fluid, so now people have this fear of getting a question wrong. That fear is always there, that anxiety is always there and that anxiety can only be overcome if you have practiced well enough, which I'll be talking about in a short while. How much practice is enough? How much topical questions are to be done? How many yearly past papers should be practiced? And when we are talking about that fear, so make sure that you do not do one more thing, that is writing in pencil and then overwriting with a pen. That is something that is very, very much disliked by the examiner. If additional space is needed, you should use the lined page at the end of this booklet. Now remember this thing, that the space that they have given, that's a lot of space, provided you don't do trial and error. So naturally, as the saying goes, that think first and then act upon it. So first you should think, you have a pencil, you can write down things over there, you can, maybe there is a formula which is not given in the formula booklet. For example, if I talk about sine of 90 minus theta is cosine theta. Now this is not given in the formula booklet. And you have a problem in remembering this. So as soon as you get the question paper, just jot it down. That's just like downloading from your mind onto the paper. And that will save you a lot of trouble in the 
uh, question paper throughout the question paper so that is one thing that you should do that make sure whatever working that you are doing that working is solid enough and that will earn you the marks but before that whatever scribbling that you have to do whatever rough draft that you have to make do it on the sidelines the question number or numbers must be clearly shown if you are using that extra line paper i'll just show you that line paper in a while you should use a calculator where appropriate i mean this is my favorite part that is no one is saying to use calculator all the time there are questions which can be done very well easily uh, working in fractions working in decimals things like that and maybe not the calculator was not even used or maybe the examiner is asking for answers in the exact form so definitely you're not going to use the calculator where will you be using the calculator maybe you're calculating an angle in degrees angle in radians things like that so you'll be using a calculator and definitely there will be some questions in which you'll be plugging in the limits and then evaluating that integral or maybe you're dealing with a parametric equation or an implicit equation and you're looking for the turning points so yes the calculator is allowed but you should not be obsessed with the calculator always write down the steps first that is something people miss a lot people think that mark scheme is the ultimate since the examiner has shown only three steps why am i wasting my time in showing maybe nine steps the reason being is that the mark scheme specifically for the teacher so it's not for you no one ever said that the mark scheme steps are the steps that you should show go through the exam report what is the examiner always complaining about the examiner is always complaining about that if you are solving a factorization question show the steps if you are using quadratic formula show the steps if you are using a, a trick equation and you are solving that particular question then all the steps should be shown for example when we talk about p1 or for that matter p3 you should talk about the steps that is something like we should be talking about the quadrants uh, we should be talking about the basic angle we should be talking about that in the first quadrant theta is the basic angle in the second quadrant theta is 180 minus basic angle in the third quadrant theta is 180 plus basic angle in the fourth quadrant theta is 360 degrees minus the basic angle by the way what is theta theta is the angle that is being asked in the question for you to solve for finding the values so make sure that all the steps are there and then the final answer and also we should be very very particular about the accuracy give non-exact numerical answers correct to 3SF or one decimal place for angles in degrees unless a different level of accuracy is specified at the question. What does it mean? Let's say my answer is coming out to be 2 over 5. So we will leave 2 over 5 as 2 over 5. There is no need of converting into decimals. Okay, let's say you convert it into decimals and you write 0.4. Then 0.4 is also good. So now 2 over 5 is exact because it's a fraction. 0.4 is also exact, it's a fraction. So now over here, don't worry about accuracy because it's exact. If it's something like 2 over 3, and that is 0.6666 and so on, it's a recurring decimal. And this one you have to round it off and you will write 0.667. This answer is given correct to three significant figures. Maybe if you're using it for the next part, you should use the unrounded value. And one other thing that is written over here is that, that unless a different level of accuracy is specified in a question, for example, if there is a question of angle and they are giving the answer to the nearest integer. So if the answer to the nearest integer is asked for, then give the answer to the nearest integer, unless a different level of accuracy is specified in the question. And then the say it says the total mark for this paper is 75. The number of marks for each question or part question is shown in the bracket. Now, one other thing is that, yes, you should be careful enough that you should look at the marks and then you should give the answers. But don't be extra over paranoid about this. Do not overthink about that. Now, sometimes it so happens that there could be a difficult question and it's worth a little bit lesser marks. 
because the examiner is uh, has a merciful heart and the examiner don't want everyone to be losing marks on that so maybe yes it's difficult it's tricky but it's worth less marks sometimes it so happens that something is easier but it's worth a little bit more marks so yes things are justified but then there are always exceptions now if i look at this paper and uh, what you're looking at is the function fx is defined by such and such so now our objective is not going over every single question in detail definitely you have your resources such as the bite size lecture which gives you a crystal clear explanation of everything that you need to ace your exam at the same time you have recorded lessons of past papers and uh, naturally there are the handwritten solutions and things like that the objective over here is to just give you a brief overview how to solve this question now let's look at this first question it says the function f is defined by such and such this is the domain what is domain that is the input value determine whether f is an increasing and decreasing or neither so now look at the working it's related to differentiation it's related to perfect square algebraic expression and things like that and that is how you get the answer now first thing i want to emphasize that it's for three marks so maybe one mark is for the differentiation part one mark is for the explanation and there was a lot of space so yes you can handle the paper very very well provided you know exactly what the working should be second question the graph of y is equal to fx is transformed to the graph of such and such describe fully this two single transformation now when it says describe fully what does that mean it means name the transformation and tell exactly what is happening for for example it says fx is becoming f of half x so stretch along x axis by a factor of half the x coordinates are now multiplied by 2 whereas the y coordinate remains unchanged this is extra information for the examiner as such this is required and then there is the vertical translation of one unit up so this is how you explain the thing and there are four marks so one mark for the name one mark for explanation one mark for the name one mark for explanation and this is just the reference thing that was there in the uh, yearly past paper lecture that i have done i have linked it to y is equals to sin x y is equals to sin 2x y is equals to sin half x just for the explanation part then there is this question question number 3 that is about volume of revolution obtained so now look at the steps show every single step do not assume anything yes the examiner is very well educated he is making the examiner paper along with his team but he wants to see how educated you are how much effort your teacher has put into you how much have you learned from that effort how much working are you showing so show every single step this is about squaring after the squaring even though it's very obvious just show the step the next step is integration once the integration is done the integral is gone and we have a square bracket and the lower limit and the upper limit is over here make sure that you write a pi over there because wherever you rotate something something circular is bound to form and this pi is due to that and then you plug in the upper limit you plug in the lower limit you simplify and then you write down the answer and this is worth four mark every single step counts similarly when we talk about rates of change that is how is y changing with respect to time and x is changing with respect to time and how is y changing with respect to x so make sure to illustrate every possible detail do not assume anything show all necessary working you are all set for the exam and over here when we talk about trigonometry and this is equation and identities so first part is solving the equation and uh, before that there is simplification so now these are the two identities that we need for p1 tangent is sin over cos and sin square theta plus cos square theta equals to 1 so this is an explanation for that i mean just go through the working and when we talk about the trig equation this is the first step that is the second step the third step is the basic angle fourth step is the answer so that's how the working is to be done then this is an example of binomial the coefficient of 1 over x in the expansion of 2x plus a over x square raised to power of 5 is 720 and over here i have written it for you people what are the steps that is needed now when you are preparing yourself for the p1 exam 
So make sure that all the necessary detail related to a particular chapter jotted down in one place. And then be very, very familiar with the kind of question that the examiner is asking. And how is that possible? That is possible when you have done topical papers and when you have done uh, yearly papers. So as far as the yearly paper is concerned, my idea is that at least two years of yearly papers should be done. Now, what are these seven dots that I have made over here? These seven dots refer to the seven variant. So there is a March variant and then there is a three variants of June and then there is three variants of November. Now, a lot of uh, people, they have this conspiracy theory that uh, maybe it's only the variant that's applicable for us. That's the second variant. That's not the case. Every single variant is worth practicing. There are a variety of questions and the more you practice, the more you are prepared for it. And if you have a very observant eye, you can see that every year there might be a different flavor of that particular paper. Maybe sometimes they are focusing too much on uh, APGP. Uh, another year they might be focusing a bit more on trigonometry. Naturally, every single topic is being tested, but sometimes one particular component of a particular component is asked more. That means trigonometry in P1 is asked more, maybe as compared to integration and so on. Maybe this year the difficult questions were related to trigonometry. Maybe in the next year the difficult questions were related to differentiation integration. So in my view, 2023 and 2022 and 2021, this is the perfect combination. 21 papers. If you practice, you're all set for the exam. So now over here, the three-step method is what you can see. And once you find the value of A, they are asking us finding the coefficient of 1 over x7 in this expansion. So it's again the same process and you should know the terminology. Coefficient versus the term. Coefficient means just the number attached to a variable. Term means that coefficient along with the variable. So that vocabulary is there. Now, for example, this question about CM, circular measure. So I have written down the formula basic trigonometry is required make sure your calculator is in the radian mode that makes a lot of difference if you are solving a trigonometry question and uh, it could be about degrees it could be about radians but if you are solving a cm question circular measure question these formulas are designed for theta in radians so make sure your calculator is in radians and uh, now over here this particular question is about percentage and it's about GP and it's about AP and all these different scenarios are there. Make sure that you are well aware that the percentage question refers to a GP and if it's a fixed increase, it's an AP. And uh, then there is this famous chapter that is quadratex and functions, the most fearsome chapter that people deal with. Uh, express this thing in this form. So now you realize which form are they talking about? This is the completed square form. Showing the whole process is a must. Do not compromise on the steps. And then yes, there are gold standards to which we should adhere to. When we talk about a straight line equation, y is equals to mx plus c, that's the gold standard. You will always compare it with this. When we are talking about a completed square form, this is ax minus h whole square plus k. So this is the standard form. And then uh, draw a sketch wherever it's necessary, whether they have asked for it or not. That just like what I've done over here, I have drawn a sketch over here in order to answer this question. And uh, yes, these are some difficult things. The composite function, uh, f of gx, g of fx. For example, if we are talking about uh, f of g, it means first g, then f. Order makes a difference. If the function g is applied first, domain of g is the input, a range of g is the output. And then f is applied, domain of f is the input and range of f is the output. And we should know that range of G is a subset of domain of F. Now, people also ask this thing that, sir, this is one uh, difficult thing that usually comes. So the thing is that uh, what saves the day is the threshold. Yes, you try your level best. But at the same time, there will be some questions. There will be some parts that will be a little bit beyond the normal level. So don't get paranoid about it. Leave that part, go to the rest of the paper, complete 
everything else come back to it and naturally you will be able to do it in a much better way than before because why the reason is you have solved all the easy and the moderate parts and there will be some difficult parts maybe worth like maybe five marks ten marks or something like that but that won't disturb your grade because you have very well comfortably solved the rest of the paper and uh, another question and this time this is about like dy by dx and they're asking this is the gradient of the curve and they are asking the value of a they're asking the nature of stationary point they're asking the equation of the curve so now this differentiation integration questions pure maths in general that's a lot of writing so once you have that practice of writing you will be able to handle things very well and the only thing that's stopping a person from getting a desired grade is that amount of practice but before that i certainly believe that your concepts should be crystal clear and your concepts once they are crystal clear once you have written down things on a piece of paper things will become easy so at the end of this thing what i would like to tell you is that uh, make sure that you have gone over your concepts first and at the same time don't wait for perfection don't think that we'll be continuing with the topical questions all the way till the exam no you have to get started with the yearly pass paper once you get started with the yearly pass paper maybe out of eight topics of p1 you are having difficulty in maybe circle equation that's part of uh, this thing called coordinate geometry and maybe you're having difficulty in binomial so if you're having difficulty in those go back to your notes go back to your basics improve on it and then continue the objective is solving yearly past papers because that is what you will be asked for. so people that's a bit of guidance from my side for you people to ace your grades take care